Over the next few videos, we'll be looking at SE Linux or Security Enhanced Linux. Security Enhanced Linux purpose is to add another layer of security on top of our traditional security mechanisms that we have available to us. Security Enhanced Linux was developed uh, by the NSA along with the help of other vendors and it is enabled by default on all Red Hat based operating systems. It's available for most other operating systems. You can install it. There are other pieces of software that uh, you can use instead of Security Enhanced Linux. AppArmor is a very popular one. But because we're focused on Red Hat and Red Hat is the major install base in the US, we're going to look at Security Enhanced Linux. What it does is it takes the security mechanisms we already had, like file permissions and ownership and things like that, and adds another layer of mandatory access controls on top of that. Basically what Security Enhanced Linux does is take processes or users and sandbox them, put them in a little box that they can't get out of easily to either attack or try to utilize other services to t attack other services. So maybe a little, a little review of what sandboxing is. I use sandboxing all the time personally and one of the sandbox applications that I use uh, quite often is something called Sandboxy. Uh, and Sandboxy is a great little application. You can download it for free and it allow you to sandbox applications in case that while you're let's say surfing the web that browser is compromised. Well what typically will happen is if the browser is compromised the attacker gets access to the system based on your account and very likely your account has administrative privileges, especially if you're talking about a Windows-based computer. And that can cause a problem. If you look at the diagram that we have here, this top little animation that we have going here in the top on the right-hand side, you see Internet Explorer or Firefox in a compromised state, and it shows you what happens if that is compromised. Basically, the service has access to everything on the system. Let me just see if I get my my drawing tool up here. We'll come back to that in a second. So up here you're looking at a system that has not been sandboxed but the browser has been compromised and that allows the attacker to get access to all the resources or enough resources maybe to it to continue the attack and escalate the attack. On the bottom what you see is what happens when some the browser is sandboxed or any application is sandboxed. You'll notice the little yellow square in the middle of the screen. And I'll stop this and let the animation go. And what you're seeing is that as the browser, if the browser is compromised, the attacker is limited to the space, that little box, that little yellow box that's available to um, him or her. And that will prevent the compromise of the browser from compromising the entire system. So think of things like ransomware. And, and things like that where they encrypt your drive and then they, they, you know, they, they tell you send us money and we'll tell you how to unencrypt your drive. Sandboxing can help to prevent some of that. You'll notice if I go over to my computer over here, this is my C drive which is available to me and any account uh, on the system. The sandbox, what sandbox does is create a pseudo C drive underneath the C drive and that's what the attacker sees when they compromise the browser. So if I go into here you'll notice right here is the sandbox folder. If I open that up, drill down, I can go into drives. When the, when the browser is compromised and the attacker has access what they see is this. They see the C drive as this folder and they have access only to the contents of this which basically they don't have access to anything with that. So this ability to sandbox an application to keep it from compromising other applications is extremely beneficial and very very useful. As a matter of fact the browser I'm in right now is a sandbox browser. You'll notice when I click on it you see the yellow border go around the browser. So I could technically go to a malicious site, download some software, realize there's a problem with that 
and just close out the browser and then just tell Sandbox to delete the contents. So if I close this out, I can go down here to the control center for Sandbox, go there, and I can tell Sandbox to delete the contents of that box without my system being compromised. As a matter of fact, I am on a virtual machine and the virtual machines are very much like Sandbox. This operating system has been Sandbox for all intents and purposes. So if something should happen to this device, I only will lose the virtual machine, hopefully. Uh, anything is possible, right? Any, anything is possible, but the more layers of security you add, the less likely it is that you would lose control of your machine. I could run this sandbox if I want to. I can run any application with that little utility, sandbox. Well, SE Linux does something very similar to that with processes on our Linux system. Let me just close this for a second. Open up the board. So two things we need to talk about when it comes to SE Linux and what it adds. By default, we have something called discretionary access controls. Discretionary access controls are things like file permission, ownership, file configurations. You know, you can do this, you can't do that. All those are levels of security that we have available to us. SE Linux adds a whole new level of security called mandatory access controls. An analogy, I, you know, I tried to come up with an analogy that would, a uh, real world way of looking at this, and what I came up with was um, corporate policies. So let's just say on the right hand side, we have a corporation that has a set of corporate policies that are in effect on our, for all employees of the corporation. And one of the policies state that you can have, you can put in a request for a raise and that has to be submitted by January 1st of the year. Over here on the other side, what we have is our user. And our user is one of the outstanding salespeople on the team, if you will. And they've heard about this ability to get a raise. They just need to fill out a form get some references, you know, include their evaluations and submit that and everything will be great and this user, because they're so fantastic, will definitely get the raise. So they go through all that. They handle all the discretionary stuff that they can handle. They fill out the forms. They get the documents. They get, you know, reviews or evaluations from other users and they submit that um, to the system. Well, the problem with it is they submit it on January 2nd, not January 1st. So they submit it, and what happens is because they did submit it on January 2nd and not the 1st, the policy, the corporate policy kicks in and says, you know what? It doesn't matter that you have all these things correct and that you're one of the top employees that we have. You submitted the application request for a raise late and corporate policy says that it must be submitted by January 1st not January 2nd so this user who's a fantastic uh, person cannot get the raise because the corporate policy is blocking um, them from doing that that's similar to what's happening with SE Linux SE Linux will basically block off an application let me go down here if I have an application on my system, like Apache, I want Apache to be able to do what it's supposed to be able to do. But if it's compromised, I don't want Apache to be able to modify anything in, let's just say, the NFS server. So if we have NFS running on our system. So this is an outward facing application. And this is an application that typically would be inward facing. Well, without SE Linux, there's a chance that the Apache compromise will then lead to a compromise of the NFS utility or application or service. And then it can just escalate from there. So ideally, what I'd like to do is set these services up so that they are available and they do function, but what I want them to be is in their own little sandbox world. I don't want these 
applications to be able to communicate back and forth because that's not necessary. They shouldn't be able to communicate back and forth for them to be able to work correctly. So SE Linux will help me by creating these sandboxes. They actually call these domains. So domains, the domains, very similar to the sandbox in a concept, prevent these two services, if I choose to, from being able to communicate. So therefore, if the Apache service is compromised over here, it's not going to be able to easily affect any of the other services on my system. So what we'll look at next is actually we'll go in and look at some of the basics of how we can enable, disable, and change context and some of the basic commands that we use with SE Linux.